you cut a 16 foot and 10 inches long wood beam into four equal parts. Now using a tape measure, how long is each part? Okay, so that is the problem. Feel free to use a calculator. But uh, this part of the problem, using a tape measure, could be confusing to somebody out there that do not know how to read a tape measure or a ruler. But this is a very integral part of this problem because uh, you might have some decimals here, but you know you don't uh, really read uh, tape measures per se with decimals. You can, but again, I want you to think about how you would uh, measure out these pieces using a tape measure. All right, but again, if you don't know how to use a tape measure, I'll cover the basics of this uh, in the video. But uh, anyways, for those of you that have a strong background in construction or the trades, this should be quite easy for you. But uh, all of you out there should try this problem and go ahead and put your answers into the comment section. Then of course, I'm gonna solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. And I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. So first things first, First, we have a math word problem here. So always use the rule of three. Read the problem at least three times so you really understand what's going on. But uh, to really kind of visualize uh, the solution, you want to model, okay, what's going on. Now, of course, I said the word visualize because when we're thinking about a solution, you're, you're kind of thinking in your head, like, how can I do this problem? You're trying to visualize the path to, to take, right? But you don't want to do all that visualization in your head. So come up with some sort of model that you can look at. And, it, and this is where math becomes very creative. And here, I think it's pretty straightforward. The best way to kind of visualize what's going on here is just to kind of sketch out a wood beam. And of course, we're going to have to think about the units of measure. So let's go ahead and take a look at my model. And effectively, what we have here is this. So we have this wood beam. Now, of course, we want to just assume, and you never want to overcomplicate a problem and say, well, is this wood beam, wood beam perfectly straight? Is it twisted? You know, never kind of, you know, always take the simplest version of a problem, especially a math problem. Uh, but anyways, we have a perfectly lovely straight uh, wood beam here. It's 16 foot and 10 inches long, right? So we have feet and inches and we're gonna chop this thing up in four equal parts. So the question is uh, basically, how long is one of these uh, pieces, right? And of course, the measurement of this piece is the same as this piece, as the same as this piece, as is it the same as this last piece because they are equal. But we wanna read or we wanna measure this using a tape measure, all right? So this is the kind of part of the problem that could confuse some people. So let's go ahead and uh, talk real quickly about a tape measure. Now, again, I'm talking about um, a tape measure with uh, uh, standard units. Now, on a, on I guess most tape measures, um, somebody out there can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe also too you do have uh, the metric system on like one side, like a ruler, you'll have both the metric system and standard system. But on a lot of tape measures, uh, you'll only just kind of have uh, inches and feet. All right, so if I'm sure there's a, all different sorts of type of tape measures, but I'm just going to be focusing on feet and inches. Okay, so here is our lovely tape measure, and of course this thing kind of you know spools around the center, and we can pull this thing out to measure all different sorts of lengths. So you know there's basically two lengths or two uh, uh, parts of the tape measure that you want to pay attention to, and that is the feet and inches, right? So we have one foot. Uh, two feet, etc. And of course this tape measure can go out all depending on what type of tape measure you have. Maybe it's like a 25 foot tape measure or a 50 foot. They get pretty long. But uh, what we want to do here is realize that one foot, okay, uh, is equal to 12 inches. So these are pretty common conversions and, uh, and uh, units of measure uh, that most people should be familiar with. But if you didn't know, in one foot, okay, so between one foot and tw um, and two feet on the tape measure are 12 inches. Okay, so that is the basics of that part of the tape measure. But let's get into the next part of the tape measure, and that's how we read 
uh, in between these inches, okay? So we have feet, that's pretty easy because you'll see these things, one foot, two foot, three foot. But what about the inches part? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that right now. Okay, so this is just super basic uh, kind of stuff and um, hopefully uh, most of you out there have experience reading a ruler or a tape measure, but let's suppose you're looking at our tape measure and here we're at, we're looking at the inches. Okay, so this would be like three inches and four inches. Now, not feet, okay? We're talking about inches right now. So it, uh, between three inches and four inches, you'll see a big mark right here, and it's kind of the halfway point, okay? So this point right here would be what? Well, if you had something that was this long, let me kind of just draw something out. Let's say you had something and you were measuring it, and it went to this point right here. Well, how would we express this uh, uh, measurement? Okay, well, it passes three inches, it's not at four inches, and it's at the halfway mark. So this point right here would be three and one half inches, three and one half inches. We don't typically use decimals like 3.5 inches. Now, that's it's okay to express that because on a tape measure with inches, uh, you know, we have, let's go ahead and take a look at the other parts of it, and we want to kind of use the fractions that are involved here. So you're going to have, and these are, uh, this is pretty common uh, for those of you, of course, that are experienced with, you know, construction and whatnot, you do this all the time, but this point right here would be uh, three and one and a half inches. Now let's suppose our little thingamajiggy or whatever the case is goes out to this point right here. I don't know, I don't know if you could see that, but this point would be what? Well, here, this is our half inch mark. Now we're gonna split this half again into quarters. So you'll see these little kind of hashtags here. So this is one fourth, this is two fourths, and two fourths is the same thing as one half. This is three fourths, okay, of an inch. And then of course, this is four fourths, which is one, one entire inch. So that you're, uh, here uh, is the fourth measurement, so one fourth, two-fourths, which of course is one-half, and three-fourths, and four-fourths. All right, so again, uh, when it comes to reading a tape measure uh, with inches, you're going to want to be thinking in terms of fractions. All right, so uh, here again is our fourths, but we can split this again, and some of you might say, wow, my goodness, we got to do all this fraction work? Well, yes, indeed, you do. So let's suppose our uh, little thing that we're measuring goes out to this point right here. So right here is a fourth. This is one fourth. Let me kind of actually uh, write this a little bit clearer. And hopefully uh, most of you out there are with me. Okay, so this is one half right here. Let me erase this uh, just so no one's confused. Okay, so this is one half. And then this right here is one fourth. Now we're splitting the one fourth and half again. Okay, so we're going to take that one fourth and divide it by two. So this is going to be what? This is going to be one eighth. Okay, so this measurement right here would be three and one eighth inches. Three and one eighth inches. And then we can even split that eighth again into sixteenths. Okay, now you could have this right here. This would be one sixteenth, two sixteenths. So two sixteenths, if we uh, uh, reduce that fraction, that is one eighth of an inch. But then we can have the next eight, uh, eighth or the next sixteenth. So not two sixteenths, we can have three sixteenths. And these are all pretty common uh, standard measurements like uh, three sixteenths, you know, seven eighths. These are the type of things, uh, this type of, this is the way we measure on a tape measure, okay, especially if you are in any in, in any sort of construction or trade, you know, if you go and you're like measure something at your house and you go to your local Home Depot or Lowe's, you're like, hey, I need to uh, pick this thing up. They're not, they're going to want to see your measurements in terms of fractions, not in decimals, okay? So I guess that's the big point I'm trying to make here. You need to be able to interpret the measurements with fractions, okay? Not decimal. So you wouldn't say, oh, my thing right here is 3.75 uh, 3 inches. Of course, we can understand that 0.75 inches is three fourths of an inch, but when it gets into like one eighth or, th or uh, three sixteenths, you want to use uh, the fractions that are on the measurement. Okay, so hopefully this kind of is a quick review for some of you out there and uh, some of you that have a lot more experience 
than I, I do. Maybe you're like a machinist or something. You have, you know, or could, someone in construction. You do this all the time. You can do this stuff in your head. You're so good at it. But um, anyways, hopefully this is helpful. But this is what we want to do. We want to be thinking in terms of the tape measure. Okay, now uh, let's go back and understand the situation. So here is our wood beam. It's 16 foot and 10 inches. So if I want to know, and we're going to split this in four equal parts, if I want to know the distance of one part, well, what do I need to do? Well, I need to take this length and divide it by four. Okay, but I have a situation here. I'm dealing with feet and inches. So I have two different units of measure. Uh, so what do we do with that? Well, what we want to do, and there's different approaches to this, all depending upon your experience, by the way, because a lot of you have a lot of experience, you know, uh, using tape measures and, you know, you probably do it for a living. You know, you may uh, do this even in your head. But what I want to suggest is that we want to uh, have one common units of measure, one common unit of measure. So we have feet and we have inches. So always use the smaller uh, units here. So let's just go with inches. Okay, so let's just convert everything into inches and then we'll kind of uh, take the problem from there. All right, so what does that mean? Well, we're going to have to uh, figure out what 16 feet and 10 inches is all equal to in terms of inches. So how do I convert 16 feet into inches? Easy, all I have to do is multiply uh, 16 by 12, okay? Because remember, in one foot, uh, there are 12 inches. So 16 feet, we'll have 16 times 12 uh, times 12 inches. So 16 feet is 192 inches. Now, I already have these 10 inches right here, right? 16 feet and 10 inches. So collectively, my total here is uh, 192 plus 10, which, of course, is 202 inches, Okay, so 16 feet and 10 inches, we determine is 202 inches. Okay, so if we want to know uh, how, if we're going to split this um, beam in four equal parts, and this beam is 202 inches, we simply are just going to take that 202 and divide it by four. Now, remember in the beginning of this video, I said feel free, feel free to use a calculator. No big deal here. So 202 divided by four is 50.5 inches. Now, I would say 99% of people could in, uh, interpret what 50.5 inches uh, is on a tape measure, okay? You'll be like, oh, yeah, that's going to be a half inch. But uh, I don't want to make that assumption, and I want to go ahead and talk to those uh, people that might still be confused on, okay, well, again, uh, how do I read this on a tape measure? All right, so we have 50.5 inch, inches. There's a couple different ways we could do this. All right, so we have 50 and a 0.5 of an inch. All right, so 50 inches here and 0.5 of an inch. Now, if you remember on, a, our, on our tape measure, our tape measure deals with fractions, okay, not decimals. So let's interpret what 0.5 of an inch is. Okay, well, 0.5 is this decimal here, we, uh, we read this as 5 tenths. 0.5 is 5 tenths, and of course 5 tenths is a fraction that we, could reduce, can we, we can reduce to 1 half. So 0.5 of an inch is the same thing as 1 half inch. And of course, we remember how to read that on our lovely little mark there. So that's where that location is going to be. That's one half of an inch. So 50.5 uh, inches is the same thing as 50 and one half inches. All right, so what do we do? Well, how do we uh, kind of measure this out? So we're gonna get our lovely uh, tape measure. And on, on our tape measure, you have uh, both uh, feet and you have the inches. So you wanna, uh, if you wanna measure out the pieces in this way, you're going to focus on inches and you're gonna be looking for 50, right? So you're gonna be scanning along, pulling out the tape measure and be like, okay, here's 50 and here's 51. So where's 50? and one half inches, well, here's 50 inches, so one half of an inch is right here, okay? So we would kind of measure this thing out at this point like so, and that would be the appropriate location. All right, so that's one way you could measure this just by, you know, uh, using inches or describe the measurements. That's perfectly fine, 50 inches and 50 and one half inches. Okay, so that is that, again, uh, uh, you know, the tape measure or a ruler is dealing with fractions, not decimals. And this is obviously very easy because one half is the same thing as 0.5. But there's another way we kind of think of this um, answer, right? So 50.5 inches. We could kind of uh, break this down 
uh, in this manner. So we have 50 inches. Okay, when we have 50 and one half inches, but 50 inches in here we have some feet. Okay, so how many feet are with uh, in 50 uh, inches? Well, a lot of you out there know that uh, we're talking about multiples of 12, right? So 12 times 4 gives us 48. So 48 inches is the same thing as 4 feet. So we could just think of this 50 uh, inches as 48 plus 2 inches, which of course is 50 inches. But the 48 inches is 4 feet. And then we're left with 2 and 1 half inches. So you could give this measurement as 4 feet and 2 and 1 half inches. But the main idea here, okay, is, uh, you know, uh, tape measures and, you know, just rulers, you know, you use fractions and not decimals. Now, of course, you can convert a decimal into a fraction, but, you know, I think it's uh, a problem like this, hopefully, gives some practical value for those of you that forgot how to read a tape measure because you just never know. You know you're doing some sort of project around the house. Maybe you want some new curtains or you know, you're, you're measuring uh, around your uh, door for whatever molding. It doesn't make a difference. Mathematics is, you know, it, the whole purpose of math is to solve practical problems. And, you know, using a tape measure is a practical skill. And uh, I think, too, that this gives a real, um, hopefully gives some sort of appreciation to those of you that don't realize how um, strong uh, a lot of people in the trades are in math. I'm talking about, uh, I've, I've talked to so many uh, people. I have, I mean, I've, I'm a pretty handy person. I've done a lot of handy work, uh, you know, construction, those type of things. But uh, really some of the professionals in the trades, whether the machinist or con in construction or any type of thing that you have to deal with measuring, okay? And this is a big deal. And it can get really um, um, complex, by the way, too, especially like if you're a machinist, you know, these type of things or uh, people that are using computer um, uh, software to come up and, you know, mill. And uh, I mean, if you're not familiar with some of the production processes, you really have to be good in math and you must know how to measure. So uh, anyways, again, hopefully this problem was interesting. And by the way, too, uh, just one quick thing. If you are kind of like, you know, thinking to yourself, boy, I don't even really, uh, you know, understand basic math. Maybe this video kind of inspired you to kind of want to relearn about fractions and decimals. If you want to kind of review some basic mathematics, well, let me go ahead and suggest my Math Foundations course, right? I never want to kind of leave someone, you know, hanging out there that wants to kind of improve their math skills beyond uh, this video because this video we're just covering a prom. So if you do want to get inspired and learn mathematics or relearn math or learn math uh, uh, for the first time, I have two courses here. Matter of fact, let me just stop here and tell you. The first is my Math Foundations course. I just cover basic math, decimals, fractions, all that kind of stuff that most people forgot way back in elementary or primary school. But a better course is my Math Skills Rebuilder course. I cover everything in that Foundations course in that course, but in this course I cover a ton of algebra, geometry, trigonometry, uh, basic probability and statistics. You'll get a very strong math education. But anyways, hopefully this video was interesting. If that was the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.